What's going on, everyone? So going into the season, we were extremely hyped, right? All of the acquisitions, all of the size, the versatility. It was like, man, Lakers are going to be off to the races. You give me a healthy LeBron, healthy AD, depends on how many games they play. But hey, even if they miss some games, this is a roster that definitely could get some wins. This is a roster that could definitely uh, win some games without LeBron and AD. Uh, certain matchups, maybe you could even win without both. And so far, it hasn't really gone that way, right? It hasn't gone the way that we had hoped. Uh, the Lakers currently on the season are two games over 500. Now, they have been much better lately, uh, but they're still the ninth seed. It's a team that wasn't that long ago in, in, in memory, right? Where the Lakers just won the end season tournament and were five games over 500. Since then, the Lakers have dropped and fallen mightily. Uh, they are currently the ninth seed, 28-26. They are, at the time of recording this video, so depending on when you're watching this, things could change. The Lakers are currently three and a half games out of the fifth seed, which is good. So they're not out of it, right? They could easily go on a run, turn things around. Boom, we're in, we're in range. Um, we are currently uh, three or two and a half games out of the Dallas Mavericks for the eighth seed, and uh, three and a half games out of the seventh seed. Uh, basically, the Kings, the Suns, and the Pelicans are all right there uh, with the five, six, and seven seed. So it, basically, if we catch one, we might be able to catch all of them. And it's not too late. Look, the Lakers have the talent. They have everything that you could want. The month of January was supposed to be the month in which this team really like turned things around, and it just didn't happen. I mean, the month of January was like loss, loss, win, win, loss, loss, win, win, loss, win, loss, win, win, loss, loss. I mean, talk about being consistently inconsistent, right? That is terrible. But you look at the month of February, they are four and one in their last five games, which is huge, right? They are six and three in their last nine and six and four in their last 10. So if they can kind of keep the pace that they are in the month of February and really close out this month strong, which is very possible. You have the Pistons, the Jazz, the Warriors, the Spurs, the Suns, the Clippers, and the Wizards. All of those games are winnable. The Lakers have beaten all of these teams and could easily do it again. Lakers beat, should beat the Pistons and the Jazz on the back-to-back. -back. That's a three-game win streak. Now you're four games over 500 going into that Warriors game. Warriors have been much better lately, too. That's a real question. Can you navigate that? Can you beat them? If you do, you should be able to beat the Spurs. I mean, the Lakers could be easily on like a five game. Now you're six games over 500 going into that Suns and Clippers game. But regardless, they have, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. You got to go five and two. Got to go five and two. Now you're back to five games over 500. Now you're in a good position going into that month of March, which is brutal. Now, a lot of it has just been injuries, right? We've been suffering with all kinds of injuries, all kinds of issues, and it's all been like our defensive guys, <laughs> right? Cam Reddish, Jared Vanderbilt, uh, Gabe Vincent's missed pretty much the entire season. He's only played five games this year, and even Max Christie has been out. And so when you have that, and then also you have guys like D'Lo in and out, you have, uh, you know, Rui's kind of been in and out. Uh, you have all of these little issues and ailments, it's like, how do you quite right the ship? How do you quite build that chemistry and that understanding, especially when you're losing the defensive guys? And the Lakers have still been holding on, right? They're still 14th in defense. Um, they might actually be worse now. They might be back to 15th or 16 just because they last game they gave up 122 points to the Pelicans. But going into that Pelicans game, they were 14th in defense, right? The offense is starting to pick up. They've been much better offensively. They've also haven't been as stagnant offensively, which is huge. But you got to get the our defense guys back. Cam Reddish is basically any day should be back. I mean, he could be back for the Pistons or the Jazz game. Um, also, you have um, Max Christie, who's kind of day-to-day too. Although, I do think Max Christie will probably fall out of the rotation at some point. And I'll kind of touch on that more here in a moment. But... We, if we can just get and right the ship, get healthy come playoffs, I'll take my chances with anybody, right? This team has the versatility. We've seen this team lock down and focus and what that looks like when this team can focus on just both sides of the basketball when you have the healthy roster. 
I do have my concerns about the consistency, right? The energy, the effort, the the keeping the, the consistency game in and game out is a concern that I have because they have been, as I mentioned earlier, very consistently inconsistent. And until they actually get that consistency, it's going to be an issue. Now, again, in the month of February, it, they have been a lot more consistent. They've looked really good. Their only loss was to Denver, which they were missing several guys. And you could talk yourself into, hey, if we had D'Lo and everybody else, we'd probably win that game. And we would be 5-0 and in, in, the month of, uh, in the month of February. And we have some very notable wins. You're talking the Celtics, the Knicks, the Pelicans, right? So we're in good shape. And again, this is a real month to kind of turn things around. Picking up Spencer Dinwiddie, I think, is huge. Because he's a guy that is a true starting level player. Whether he comes off the bench, whether he uh, starts, whatever the Lakers end up doing with him, he is a guy that can play both sides of the basketball, a legit 17 and 6 guy. That, yes, he's having a down year. A lot of that is just he checked out with the with the Brooklyn Nets. Their relationship was done. He wanted out. He was done. I don't like players when they do that, but we got him for a vet minimum. We didn't go and trade a bunch of assets for him. So you just got the arguably one of the best low risk, high upside type players that you could get in a buyout situation. And he is a guy that can easily come in and make a real impact with this team, with this roster. It just gives you another guy that's going to bring energy night in and night out. He's he's a guy that born and raised, grew up in LA, diehard Laker fan growing up, always dreamt of being a Laker, was obsessed and idolized Kobe Bryant as we all did. Right? And now he gets to put on that jersey. You don't think that guy's going to bring it 100%? Of course also, one of the best seasons of his career was last year with Dallas and playing alongside Luka. You don't think he's going to be great playing alongside LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and even D'Angelo Russell. He also has chemistry with half of the roster. He's played with D'Lo. He's played with Prince. He's played with Rui. He's played with uh, Wood. Right, All of these guys, that, that's good. That's built-in chemistry. It also gives us that another scoring threat, another consistency guy, right? I'm going to touch on D'Lo and Reeves here in a moment, but the problem is we need Reeves and D'Lo basically to be great collectively game in and game out. Problem is, is that hasn't really been the case, right? D'Lo's been spectacular the last like month and a half. I mean, the dude's averaging like 28 a game. And I do believe he can maintain that. But Reeves has had his struggles. He's been, you know, have a great game where he goes and gives you a 27. And in the next, like, three games, he's, like, nine points, two of 12 or something like that. But if you get a guy like Spencer Dinwiddie, now that takes pressure off of everybody else. Now, D'Lo has a bad game. Well, you have Dinwiddie. If Reeves has a bad game, well, you have Dinwiddie. If Dinwiddie has a bad game, you have D'Lo and Reeves. It just gives you another body that has the capability of going off for 20 a night on any given night. Gives you a guy that is a true starting level player. And it gets you a guy that's bringing new energy and excitement. And that can be contagious. That is something that he wasn't dealing... He's he's out of a frustrating situation that was not good for him. He's in a place where he wants to be and has always dreamt of being. You don't think he's going to come in and just raise that bar of energy? Of course. And now that bleeds into everybody else. Because they're all watching Spencer Dinwiddie go 100 miles an hour. You don't think that everyone else is going to want to go 100 miles an hour as well? Absolutely. You saw the effort, energy, and the infection that Jared Vanderbilt brought. And he's not as gifted, I mean, obviously on the defense side, but offensively, playmaking, all that stuff, not as gifted as Spencer Dinwiddie is. So Spencer Dinwiddie can kind of interject that effort and energy that we're losing with the Jared Vanderbilt and stuff. Guys start coming back, getting healthy. You could see this team really starting to turn around. Again, I'm not saying that Spencer Dinwiddie, all of a sudden we're the best team in the league, but don't underestimate the impact that Spencer Dinwiddie can provide to this team. And that's where it goes into Max Christie, as I mentioned earlier. I just think when everybody gets healthy, Max Christie falls out. I do. I just don't see him uh, actually getting real 
time, like who are you playing him over? Right? You're not playing him over Spencer Dinwiddie, Austin Reeves, or D'Angelo Russell. Definitely not playing him over Gabe Vincent unless Gabe Vincent's just terrible when he returns. Um, and all those guys have playoff experience, whatnot. So, you know, you're talking about a 20-year-old kid who I love and believe will be a real player in this league at some point. But he's just not there yet. I love Max Christie. I love what he's done in the spots, but he's 20. Let him go be 20. Let him get the experience. Let him kind of learn. Um, you know, if you could play him in spots, sure. But more likely than not, he's not going to play a ton, especially once we get to the playoffs. But look. Anthony Davis is the most important player. LeBron James is obviously LeBron James, and he there's no making up for what he can do. D'Lo and Reeves, and now I would even add Spencer Dinwiddie to that mix, might be the second most important players. Right? If you if you get what I'm saying. Now, obviously, none of them are as good as LeBron James's impact, but you know what you're going to get from LeBron. You know what LeBron is going to bring, especially come the playoffs, right? You don't have to worry about LeBron, but we need D'Lo Reeves and Spencer Dinwiddie now. We need them to consistently, game in and game out, bring it. We need that energy, that effort, We need their scoring, their playmaking, all of the things that they bring and provide. Again, personally, just me, I would start Spencer Dinwiddie and move Reeves to the bench. Reeves gives you actually better efficiency in the same production off the bench. Because for him, it's just minutes. Spencer Dinwiddie, I think, gives you a lot of what the Lakers lack in the starting unit. That athleticism at the guard position, the point of attack defensive guy. And his ability to play off ball. I know a lot of people are like, well, he's a point guard, though. His best his best season, or arguably his best season of his career, was him playing shooting guard alongside Luka. He'll be fine. right? He's a combo guard more than he is a point guard. He just has the ability to step in and play the point guard role. But he can do either. If those three guys can consistently provide that other offensive injection as well as the playmaking, provide some rebounding, all those things, the Lakers are going to be very good. Because the issue is, and it's been like that for a majority of the season, it hasn't been that case as much lately, but one of the big issues has been LeBron James and Anthony Davis basically accounting for half of your points, assists, and rebounds. And you're not going to win many games that way. You're just not. So you need those guys like a, again, D'Lo, a Reeves, a Spencer Dinwiddie to come in and at least two of them a night braining it and giving you real production, real play. And then also goes on Darvin Ham, right? Darvin Ham has to be able to recognize and, and know, okay, Reeves doesn't have it tonight. He shouldn't be playing 36 minutes while Spencer Dinwiddie, who does have it tonight, is playing 30 minutes, right? It just... He needs to be able to recognize, okay, this guy doesn't have it tonight. It's fine. Hey, you get it next game, and you'll be the guy playing 36 minutes, right? The the leashes on some of these guys have just been long, especially guys like Torian Prince, right? Torian Prince, I love what Torian Prince has brought, brought this year. He has been really good. I know a lot of people hate the guy because, not because of his play, but because of Darvin Ham. Because he's not a guy that's supposed to be playing 36 minutes a game. Some of that has been due to injuries, but still, right? But he's a role guy. He's a guy that, you know, comes in, plays ideally. He's only supposed to come in, play 15 minutes a game. If he can knock down two or three threes, he did his job. Perfect. Those are the kind of guys, right? Uh, A Christian Wood, a Jackson Hayes, even like a Rui Hachimura to an extent. But to me, D'Lo Reeves and Spencer Dinwiddie are the other key guys. Those, at least one of those guys needs to be the clear-cut third guy every single night. It doesn't have to be the same guy. I don't care, right? It could be D'Lo most nights, and then Dinwiddie others, and then Reeves others. I don't care. But at least one of them needs to be that third guy that night. And everybody needs to recognize, okay, tonight he's got it. Let's get him the ball. Let's let him be the third guy. And one of the other two need to be that fourth. They do that, we're going to have a lot of success got to get LeBron James and Anthony Davis help. We have, in my opinion, the help on this team. 
Can they just put it together? Can they consistently bring it night in and night out, game in and game out? Because so far, they haven't been able to. And that's been a real problem. It's never too late to turn it around. It's never too late to correct it and, you know, course correct and and turn this. I mean, we saw it last season, right? The Lakers turned it around, boom. All of a sudden, we're in the conference finals. I very believe <laughs> that that can happen again this year. The only team that I have genuine concerns about, and I'm talking about in the entire league, is Denver. Because Denver just seems to have our number. And they beat us the same way every single time. But that doesn't mean that we can't beat them. Doesn't mean that we can't right the ship enough to go in and beat them. I just, we need to start seeing it now. You need to start developing those good habits and start developing those things now. Right? You, you saw that in the Pelicans game. Right? The they They looked great at times. But then you saw the bad habits you know, leak out a little bit. And it's like, can't have that. You know, you saw some of the bad habits in the Denver game. Can't have that. The Hornets. Lakers should have just ran through the Hornets. Then they just got, then they just kind of defaulted to the bad habits. And look, I like the wins. I'll take the wins. But when you're a team all season that has had, that has shown these terrible habits, you need to start correcting them. You need to start fixing those habits. Right? Yes, a win is a win. But if we were a team where that was an outlier, wouldn't even mention it. Wouldn't even care. Hey, it happens. Yeah, big leads, play a bad team. I mean, Boston was down like 25 to Detroit. <laughs> right? It, it happens. But when you're a team that has been bad, and a lot of it has been these just blemishes, these bad habits... It's kind of hard to look away. It's kind of hard to look and ignore those. But look, I believe in this team 100%. I do. We have the talent. We have the stars. We have all the pieces you need. Spencer Dinwiddie, I think, is a huge pickup for the Lakers. Got to put it together. But anyways, always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree with my points? Are you somewhere in between? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I would love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next.